Hello, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. You are probably watching this video because you have heard about probability density functions or PDFs, somewhere in your probability and statistics course or some other data science related courses. My goal in this video is to show you what a probability density function is without going through complicated mathematical equations that you usually see in other places. To start, let's look at the definition of a random variable without using mathematical equations. In simple terms, a random variable is a variable that is subject to random variations so that it can take on multiple different values. For example, Temperature is usually a random variable because it's always changing over a period of time. Now that we know what a random variable is, we can define probability density function. Probability density function allows us to understand the range of values that a random variable can take. For example, temperature values during the summertime and wintertime they are completely different, so it might be useful to use probability density function to understand the distribution of temperature in different uh, seasons. You have probably heard about Gaussian or normal distribution and the fact that the probability density function has this bell-shaped curve given by this equation for f of x, which is the probability density function, is equal to 1 over a square root of 2 pi sigma squared times exponential of negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared, where mu is the mean or expected value and sigma is the standard deviation. And yes, this equation is complicated and not really easy to understand in the first place. So the goal is to show you how we can use Python to visualize this distribution and understand what these mean and standard deviation parameters look like. And don't be worried, you don't have to install Python on your own computer or laptop. You can simply use Google Collaboratory, or for short Google Collab, which allows you to write and execute Python just in your browser without any configuration and you also don't have to install any packages. In order to use Google Clab, you have to go to Google to collab.research.google.com or you can also go to your Google Drive and then you create a notebook which is very similar to Jupyter Notebook which allows you to write code and run each cell. So please open up your Google Clab and type in these three lines, import numpy as np, import seaborn as sns, and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. After this, we usually need one or two more lines of code and we can plot very nice figures. Okay, so now let's start with the Gaussian or normal distribution. So here, the idea is that we are gonna create a lot of samples here, 1 million samples from the Gaussian distribution and then we use the histogram of this data to figure out how these samples are distributed. To create samples, we use np.random.randn which creates a Gaussian distribution with mean 0 and variance 1 and then sns.histplot is how we can get the histogram of data. And for the figure on the left, we use the count uh, plot, which counts that how many samples we have in each bin in this problem. And here we have used 20 bins to show you how exactly it works. So the x-axis has been divided to 20 bins, and then we count how many samples are in each bin. The figure on the right, we are creating very similar figure, except the fact that now we have density instead of a count plot. So you can think of a density here 
as a normalized version of what we had before. So therefore, if now we use 100,000 or 10 million samples, we get a very similar figure with exactly the same boundaries here. And obviously, this shows us that the mean is zero, so meaning that all the samples are centered around zero. And then we also see the standard deviation or the spread of the data around its mean value. And one reason that we increase the number of bins here is because we want to have this very nice uh, distribution plot that looks very smooth. Now let's look, take a look at the connection between this distribution plot and the probability density function that we had in uh, the first slide. So we know that the probability density function has this form where we have the mean parameter mu and the standard deviation sigma. And as we said in that uh, distribution plot, we have mean or expected value set to be zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. So if we plug in these numbers, we find this simplified version, which f of x is one over a square root of two pi, exponential of negative x squared over two. And now we can see the values of this function at different values of x. So one time we set x equals to zero, so then obviously we get exponential of zero, which is one, times one over a square root of two pi. And then you can compute this, which would be almost 0.4. And then we can also find f of x for other values of x, which here we are computing that for x equals two. And this gives us 0.05. And as you see, this is exactly consistent with what we have in this distribution plot. Now let's change the mu parameter, which is the mean of the distribution, and see how that changes this distribution plot that we have here. So here, instead of using np.random.randn, I'm using np.random.normal because we want to use a Gaussian distribution with different values of mu and sigma. And you cannot use this with rand n that we did in the previous slide. But similar to before, we are generating 1 million samples with sigma or standard deviation one, and then we change the mu parameter. One time mu is equal to zero, and then mu is equal to two. And then we uh, plot the distribution of data using sns.histplot. And as we can see here, in the figure on the top, we have all the samples centered at zero, and the one on the bottom, all the data points are centered at two. And this is exactly consistent with the way that we change the mean values of this Gaussian distribution. Next, we will fix the mu parameter and we are going to change sigma, which is the standard deviation. So one time we set sigma equal to one and the other sigma is equal to five. And here we are also fixing the x and y limits on both axes to be able to compare these two distributions together. So that's why we're using this dot set, dot set x lim and y lim. So this gives us the limit on the x axis and the y axis. In both cases, data samples are distributed around zero. And that's exactly what we have done when we created these distributions. But we see that as we increase sigma, data samples are more spread around the mean or expected value. And that's something that we can see in the bottom figure that then the max at zero would be around 0.1 instead of 0.4. But on the other hand, now we, the distribution can take on values even up to negative 10 and 10. Whereas in the previous case, it was very unlikely that we have samples close to 10 and negative 10. After talking about Gaussian or normal distribution, we can repeat the same process for other distributions. For example, the probability density function 
for exponential random variables has this form of 1 over beta exponential of negative x over beta and x should be positive meaning that for negative values of x f of x is 0 and in that case this means that this random variable can take on only non-negative values and the parameter beta is known as the scale parameter. So what we want to do is to see if we can find connections between the mean and the standard deviation of this random variable with the parameter beta or a scale parameter. And we want to do this without using complicated mathematical equations. So in order to do that, we are going to look at the implementation of this in NumPy and that would be np.random.exponential and you obviously have to pass this parameter beta which is the scale parameter and we are going to create 1 million samples and we use sns.hisplot to find the distribution of data. So here you can kind of see that the mean or expected value of the data samples is at 0.5 uh, which is exactly the same as beta that we set when we created this random variable. So this means that the expected value of exponential distribution is exactly the scale parameter beta. How about the standard deviation? So in this case, we repeat the same experiment and we choose two different values of beta. So obviously, when we increase beta, we see that the data is spread more around the mean or expected value. In fact, we can prove that the standard deviation of exponential distribution is also equal to the scale parameter or beta. However, here we could easily see that when we increase beta, the standard deviation also increases. Finally, our goal is to show that how you can find the probability distribution of the sum of two random variables. This is a very typical example that you see in probability and statistics, and usually you have to write a lot of equations to solve this problem. And this technique that we are uh, showing here will help you to check your results and make sure that what you get is correct. So here we are creating two Gaussian distributions with the same standard deviation or sigma, but two different uh, mean or expected value parameters. So here x1 is a Gaussian distribution with mean 2 and a standard deviation 1 and x2 is another Gaussian distribution which is independent of the first one with mean 3 and a standard deviation 1. And we can create these 1 million samples and then we add them together so y is the sum of these two random variables and we can use again sns.hisplot to find the distribution of data. And here, visually, we can see that the result has the same standard deviation, except the fact that now the data is centered at 5, which is very easy to understand why this happens, because 5 is equal to mu1 plus mu2, which means that the mean of the new distribution is the sum of the two other distributions. And similarly, you can repeat this experiment when you fix the mean parameter and you change uh, standard deviations or sigmas. And you can also do this with other distributions that are available through Python. I hope that you find this really useful and uh, somewhat complementary to what you learn in probability and statistics. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to Dr. Data Science channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching.